give you a bit of an update on what's happening uh, in, in sort of the online world, the technology world. Then I'm going to get back to that setup, and I think that's where the rubber really hits the road. But I, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure some of you sort of are interested in uh, some of these stats. Just to give you a bit of a reality check for what's going on right now uh, in, in the Canadian environment. Um, so, the, so in terms of technology, this is interesting. Um, one of our clients is MediaVest, and uh, we work for, for them in the New York office as well as the Toronto office. And we have a panel, as, as a lot of our clients are doing right now. They have panels of young people across the country, across the world, helping them you know, decide on strategic direction, you know, uh, working with uh, beer companies, figuring out whether it's going to be a, a ticket or a shirt you get in the box, like everything in between. This is something we did with our MediaVest panel, a bunch of sort of like 30 high-end kind of key influencers sort of looking at where things are going. One, the first thing we did when we recruited them was say, hey, hey, do a timeline of all the different types of media that's been in your life. And I think this is really interesting because if you look up here, the timeline that we created, this is aggregate, you know, 1990 to 2000, you know, in 10 years, you got a, a few things that came in. You know, you got the cell phones happening here. I remember that. CD players, may they rest in peace, you know, down here. Who's, who's still got CDs hanging out in their house, you know? Oh my God, same with me. It's like, I'm, in, I'm back into vinyl, though. Vinyl's good, it's old school. It's, vinyl's more relevant now than CDs, actually. Which is good, it's true. All right, fine. But anyway, you take a look at the 10 years here, and you know, there's some significant stuff here. And then back 2001, yo, Napster, Sean Fanning, and the crowd starts happening. And in five years, you start noticing all this other kind of stuff happening. Because, uh, remember them? Xbox 360, yeah, they're happening, Last FM. And now, look at from 2007 to even just now, as basically a similar number of innovations that are happening out there. So that just sort of gives you an idea that they, these are the, these are the types of devices that they're just integrating into their lives, the types of apps, the types of software, the types of technology that's part of their life. I thought that sort of sets things up really nicely. Here in Canada, you would think, you know, obviously we have mass penetration in terms of uh, high, uh, high speed internet and all that. It's a good thing uh, that technology is changing at the speed of light because 14 to 34 year olds, um, 40% of them say they agree strongly or, uh, or, or just agree that they get really excited when they hear about a tech gadget or a new software app that's coming along. So, and this is driven um, uh, more by males, so some things are still sort of changing than females. But I thought that was really interesting too to share with you guys. So it's not like there's a sort of a, this, this is chugging along and this is just the Kleenex that they use to blow their noses. This is the way they move forward. Another thing, obviously we all understand that online dominates, but I just thought I'd highlight, oh jeez. I just sort of uh, thought I'd highlight that. If you take, take all this together, here are the ages, th 9 to 13. This is sort of around the area, even here, if you aggregate the times they use the internet for news entertainment, work studies, communicate, including social networking, et cetera, even blogging that they're doing, it still adds up to, could someone do quick math here? Yeah, a bit more than when they watch television, which is a good short form for mass advertising, traditional uh, broadcast, all that kind of stuff. But of course, as we move forward here, the numbers just go way, way high if you aggregate that all together. And then, of course, television continues to go down, except for these folks who are just, you know, driving figures for 30 Rock and Saturday Night Live, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, that just gives you a sense of what's happening out there. Uh, radio continues to go down, um, you know, but I, I just thought that's important to, 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 to hit you with. Another thing that's happening is that the popularity of portable entertainment, as we, we all know, is really, really uh, happening. But, but it's not expanding it the way uh, a lot of us sort of predict. In, in this world and in, in, in my world, we're always, you know, sort of breathing a different type of air. We're talking about the future, and that's a really good thing. But you do have to start understanding how's it playing in Peoria, how's it playing in Peterborough, what, what's happening really out there. And yeah, portable is where it's at, and I'll sort of hit you with a bit of uh, stats on what's happening in terms of the mobile space. But... Um, <clears throat> Really, what's, what's happening in terms of television is that the DVD player and high-speed internet together have become the TV of our times. That's where we're at. So it's a bit of a stopgap still. Everyone sort of knows that's where it's going, and I'll, I'll show you a bit of that. But right now, that's generally what your young Canadian does to sort of get around appointment viewing. Um, so they're not really, they're downloading some, uh, but, but not to the extent that, that we may experience in our own personal lives because of the industry that we're in. So I think that's important to think about. Um, and uh, yeah, let's talk about let's talk a bit about mobile phones and all this kind of stuff. I mean, uh, definitely mobile continues to be a huge area of traction. Doesn't matter um, what industry you're in. Obviously, you're starting to think about getting involved in that space. But uh, and 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 it 
points out here too. We asked them, you know, what, what types of technology items do you have in your home? And obviously, you just take a look at this. There's a boatload of uh, technology uh, available in their home right now. Uh, either they own it personally or it's in my home. I think what's interesting here, of course, as we think for the future, is this whole area of the things that they want. And we got plasma TV in there. So there's a lot of TV-oriented stuff still driving trends, which is interesting. It's an anachronistic term, and yet, and, uh, and this generation is certainly anything but anachronistic. But when you look at things that they covet, still things linked to TV. I want my HD, I want my LCD, or I want some sort of TiVo PVR, some sort of PV, uh, personal video recorder. Also interesting, and many, any advertiser in the audience are going to be heartened by this, or somebody that sells on that, the, 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 the penetration of PVRs here in Canada is actually very, very low compared to a lot of other cultures. And I think that's interesting, particularly a culture down south. It's only at 11 for owning it, and 20 in terms of it's in my, so only one in five households right now having a PVR. That's interesting, because again, we're always talking about, you know, the future of advertising, it's all a piece of crap right now, where's it going and all that. We have a bit of time here to catch up. I think that's the point I'm trying to make. Though, and we're talking about mobile here, you take a look at uh, the one thing that's, that's not around the TV sphere that they're starting to covet and really get excited about is good old PDAs or smartphones. I'm, you know, it's an iPhone, a Blackberry, a Trio. Uh, a similar amount of uh, young people that we talk to really want that in their house. And that's really interesting, even when they're younger. Um, of course, they don't own that yet. So I think that's something, again, it's the future, but it's not there yet. And what, what's uh, the, bar the large barrier there right now tends to be still, um, uh, they're concerned about price point. They're concerned about data. They're, they're thinking that the big companies are going to stick it to them one more time. They're just bending over and ready for it, and they're, they, you know, they're, they're scared. That's what's happening. In terms, of, uh, in terms of mobile phone penetration, overall, in terms of 14 to 34-year-olds, over half of them now own some sort, of, some sort of mobile phone. It's the highest penetration of, and, and in terms of ownership of all the technologies that we take a look at. So obviously, cell phones there. It's a big lifeline. Around a third of them, 9 to 13 year olds that own a mobile phone. Anybody here has a kid, obviously you're doing that, you probably understand where that's going in terms of that. Um, but the big surprise out of this whole study is this whole smartphone versus cell phone piece. If you're 9 to 13, well, I'm not really expecting you to have a Blackberry. But if you're 30 to 34, I'm kind of thinking maybe. You know, maybe you got a smartphone or an iPhone, some, something. And the numbers are, they're not, they're just hitting into the double digits right now in terms of penetration. Um, now, Keep in mind, this is where they want things to go. They're aspiring for it. We do a lot of work in the telco sphere, and any of our clients are always you know, talking about where that's going. I think, uh, I think there's a bit of a holding and waiting pattern happening right now in terms of uh, young attitudes uh, and smartphones. They're still aspirational um, by what they offer now as our studies continue to show. Um, and, and really, our perspective in it as, as, a, as, as, as researchers of youth culture is that they will absolutely become the minimum standard soon. Everyone's going to expect uh, uh, some sort of smartphone functionality to their phone. Young people do now, so everybody else is going to be expecting that too. That's where it's going. Um, and the transfer uh, to mobile devices that's rightly heralded by everybody in this room as where things are going, that is where it's going. And you're starting to notice that young people are, when we ask them all the different tasks that they do with cell phones, so they do include, include browsing and playing downloadable games and downloading in, in their armamentarium of, of, of all the different types of things that they do. But that mobile transfer really hasn't happened. When, they, when we ask them, what's the, what's the one functionality that you use the most on your smartphone or on your cell phone? It's, uh, it's always, what is it? It's always, uh, you know, downloading ringtones, talking, downloading ringtones, and, and games and things of that nature. And browsing and downloadable games is only at 1% and 2% respectively. So it's funny. You know, there's all this, this, this wonderful, you know, dreams that can be caught to, 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 you know, to talk to Alexander's piece um, that are in those, in, in the uh, iPhones and, and the berries that are in everybody's pocket or aspirationally anyway. But at the end of the day, they're not using them yet to that area.